This video was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Today we're going to be talking Giorgio Beverly Hills. Giorgio Beverly Hills. Giorgio Beverly Hills. And of course, it's Giorgio by Giorgio Beverly Hills. It's not Gio Giorgio Armani. If it were Giorgio Armani, we would have said Giorgio Armani, but we're, <laughs> we're calling it Giorgio by Giorgio Beverly Hills. <laughs> this is so funny, but it's an American product, not an Italian product. So before we get to the review, I would like to remind you, if you like my channel, to please subscribe to my channel. Put that, push that subscription button and then the notifications button as well. Uh, only 8% of you watching are actually subscribed to the channel. So the more subscribe, the merrier, the bigger the party, the more we get to spend time together. Also, push that join button next to the subscription button and become a member today. You can also become a patron and support the Fashion Bunker on Patreon. Super Deco Balls spelled together on Patreon. Thank you so much. I would also like to remind you that we have our... Uh, this is filmed live in front of a live virtual audience, so I have my wonderful audience, my co-reviewers of Giorgio Beverly Hills in the chat section right next to me on the screen. So, let's get to it, guys. <clears throat> 1981. T'was the year, 1981, when Bob Aliano, the nose behind Giorgio Beverly Hills, well, he, cre he created the perfume a couple of years before 1981. It takes years to create something. So it was, it was like several years in the making, but it was launched in 1981. And I have here several formulations of it. Giorgio has, was released in 1981. Then we got all of the 80s. Then we got the 90s. Then we got the, the 2000s or the noughties. Then we got the 10s. And now we're in the 20s. You guys, it's been many years, so all of the 80s, the 90s, the zeros, the 10s. So it's over, over 40 years. So actually, ah, 2021 is the 40th anniversary of Giorgio. Yeah, this year will be the 40th birthday of Giorgio by Giorgio, Beverly Hills. In its original packaging, this was the font and the box. It says, Giorgio, Beverly Hills, extraordinary eau de toilette natural spray. You could see how different it is to the modern day uh, design of the package. And the yellow has changed as well. This is a more dark, almost orangey. This is a pure yellow, almost into orange. This is kind of a faded yellow, which does a little bit in some ways represent also the smell of the perfume. Um, this one was distributed directly by Giorgio Beverly Hills. This is the first formulation. This batch was made for Europe in the UK. It says right down there, made in the UK. And the distribution was directly Giorgio Beverly Hills. So this is where it's at, you guys. This little juice here is the original with that original font. Then we got the current packaging that went through several formulations, but it's with Elizabeth Arden at the moment. Elizabeth Arden is a distributor and manufacturer, and Elizabeth Arden since 2000, what did I write here, 16 or 17? To th since September 7th, 2016, Elizabeth Arden has been in conglomerated completely into Revlon. So Revlon is the mother behind Giorgio. So we have the Made in USA version of Giorgio under Elizabeth Arden, I do believe. Let me check. Yeah, this is Elizabeth Arden fragr uh, Fragrances. And then we have the Elizabeth Arden formulation from Made in France. This, and this one, uh, so this one is maybe a year or two old, and this one is like five, six years old. So yeah, they are different. You can see how this one is a little bit darker. The Made in US, uh, right, this is the USA version. And the French version is a little, little bit lighter. In between these two, there was also a made in the Netherlands. Believe it or not, did they even make perfumes in the Netherlands? Apparently they did. There is a made in the Netherlands, Giorgio Beverly Hills as well out there. And the most current formulation, which is a travesty, is made in Spain. Since uh, Elizabeth Arden slash Revlon have started producing it in Spain, they've changed the formula again. And now it's not Giorgio anymore. Avoid the made in Spain if you can, because it just ain't it. It ain't it. Now, I'm going to actually spray the Made in France version, so which was the one formulation 
before the last formulation, so just one formulation before the Made in Spain. And it's beautiful. Just one spritz is enough. Wow. It's powerful, potent. It's sunshine in a bottle. Uh, we're going to go, you know, Made in America. Let's do the Made in UK, but the original formulation. You can also see how the stopper has the original. It's all round with these rings at the bottom. And then we started getting these later on, these kind of poly, octa not octag, how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Dodecagonal <laughs> shape. So this is a little civet musk bomb here. This one is going to be intense, you guys. Oh wait. <laughs> this is the stuff that, as Myth would say, this is the stuff that banned you from going to restaurants in the eighties. Now, Envision, this sunshine, literally this package, the happiness that it, it, it gives you just looking at these yellow stripes, that sunny, happy vibes. It's always good times in Los Angeles because at the end of the day, this is a Los Angeles fragrance, you know, it's a California type of vibe. Uh, Corvettes and um, bikinis and uh, sunscreen lotion, big white framed sunglasses. Um, Silk foulards wrapped around necks, waving in the air as you're driving in your Cadillac type of Corvette 50s vibes, pastel -y colors, but also flashy pinks, quaffed beautiful blonde hair, waving in the air, hair sprayed for the gods, carefree living. Who cares that there's a Cold War going on in the world? We're in LA. We don't care. We're enjoying the sun and we're happy. We're happy, 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 happy to the utmost highest degree. Interesting that this perfume uh, was released in 1981 because it marked an entire decade. It, you know, it would have had a different reception if it were released, let's say, towards the second half of the 80s. But no, it's at the beginning of the 80s, so it marked the 80s. It created... Um, it created this dream of it, first of all, it enhanced the American dream because it enhanced the the the, the smell of it. This it, this is the smell of the American dream, and uh, yes, legend says that uh, people were banned. You could not go into certain restaurants if you wore a Georgia Beverly Hills because everybody was wearing it. Everybody wanted a piece of that cake of that fabulousness or fabulosity. And Let's get to the notes quickly. But also legend says that Michael Jackson loved this perfume and would wear it from time to time. I totally could see that. It's incredible, you guys. I'm just, this perfume, I do not understand why some people do not like it. Let me just get to the notes and then we're going to listen. First of all, Bob Aliano did Giorgio. He also did Red, Giorgio Beverly Hills, 1989, another perfume I love. And then he did Hugo Boss. <laughs> 1995, he did Hugo, then he did Hugo Create Lighted Edition, then he did Hugo Spray, and Hugo by Karim Rashid. He did a lot of Hugo Boss perfumes. Cha. Baba Yana, what happened to you? You started so well. Anyway, uh, yeah, so we got this floral fragrance, white floral. I wrote all my little notes here. Hmm. Top notes, orange blossom. But it's not so prominent. It, what is more prominent is the peach, the apricot, with a, sprinkled with a bit of bergamot around it, you know, just to add that citrusy tone to it. Delicious furry peach and furry apricot. You know, the furry ones, not the nectarines, but the peach with the little fluff on top. Mid notes, tuberose, gardenia, ilang ilang, jasmine, orchid, rose. The, the more, the merrier. This, we're talking flowers, 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 the... the <laughs> The most intense flowers out there, they're here. And then we got the base notes, oak moss, the real deal in this formulation. In the new formulation, I don't even know, they don't even list oak moss anymore. But the old one, well, the old one is, you know, so old that they didn't even have to list it. So back in the day, um, the only ingredients that they were by law obliged to list was alcohol and the B40 and fragrance. That's it. <laughs> Let's check out the ingredients list from the 80s. Maybe we can zoom it in. 
Look at that. Contains SD alcohol, B40, and fragrance. That's it, you guys. 79%. Like, you guys, that's literally it. Like, that's, that's, that's it. Now the ingredients are like a whole freaking list. Nowadays, you get this whole shtick. They, this is all like, you know. Okay, thank you, IFRA. Base notes, back in the day. Oak moss for the gods. You smell it through and through, and oak moss is a fixative, so the oak moss is what kept this beautiful juice almost 40 years later still beautifully intact, and it still smells delicious, and this is the color. It didn't turn darker. It was this color back in the day, and uh, it's the it's, we thank you, oak moss. Oh, God, oak moss. <laughs> thank you so much for being this most wonderful natural ingredient, which should not be banned. Oak moss bomb. Chamomile, amber, sandalwood, musk, vanilla, patchouli, and cedar. You guys, it's a bomb. The Made in France formulation is softer. It it doesn't have the oak moss. It doesn't have that fix it. You know, the oak moss creates almost this Shepra type of 70s vibe in an 80s perfume. It, it has that heft. It turns it green. The white floral has facets of green and then has facets of musk, real musk. We ain't talking synthetics here. We're talking musk. We're talking musk. You know what I mean? And, uh, oh, it's delicious. Gardenia, ilangin. Okay, so the ilang ilang in here is butter. It is like butter and it's the ilang ilang that delivers that sunscreen Oh, you see, my mouth is watering the whole time I talk about it. It's delicious. It doesn't smell of food, though. It just smells of good times, glistening under the sun. Yes, having that sunscreen on you, but being fabulous. Having a huge, you know, hat, like a straw hat that's like double the size of your head and or 20 times the size of your head. You cover it up. The shades with the black, white frames. They have to have white frames. That's the decadanza, darling, of the 80s. And, um, and you're sipping your little cocktail, you know. You're sipping, you're sipping your daiquiri, or you're sipping your capirinha, or you're sipping your dirty martini, you know. And you just... The thrills of life through a smell. But it's oak moss. And the oak moss elevates this beauty to not just a superficial blonde bimbo from LA. It gives it substance. It gives it meat. It gives it depth. And this is why I love Giorgio so much, because it has depth. It has charisma. It's sunny. It's smiling. It's effervescent. But at the same time, it knows what it's doing. It understands the stage it's working on. It understands, you know, it's a showgirl. Giorgio is a showgirl. Giorgio knows exactly what crowd it has to do. It's been in the show business forever, and it knows its place. It knows it's, when the queue is ready. It knows when it has to step up. It knows when, you know, when the curtain is opening up. It knows that it has to wait its time, that the set has to be built up, the camera people have to set up the lights and everything, you know, it's not a diva, it's not screaming and yelling like, oh, I can't wait for you guys to be ready for me, no. Giorgio has been around for many years and it knows, or she knows, or he knows, or it knows, Giorgio knows that uh, how the show business works, it's a tough industry. And Giorgio is patient with everyone. But, mind you, when Giorgio, you know, gets that cue from the director and the lights are on and the camera starts rolling, you best believe Giorgio is going to boom. It's going to be the star. It's going to deliver an Oscar-worthy performance. It's just that, you see, the spotlights are always on Giorgio and Giorgio is constantly delivering an Oscar-worthy performance. So a lot of people are just exhausted by it because it's over the top. It's always delivering this Oscar-worthy performance. So a lot of people can't handle it long term. You know, they need a break from time to time. Giorgio doesn't deliver the break. Giorgio is entertaining for days. It's marvelous. It is such a complex, beautiful, beautiful perfume. And I mean, I don't want to sound, you know, 
snotty or you know bitchy but it, honestly the people who tell you that they don't like it they probably don't understand it it's not an easy perfume um but guess what boo neither is life and you live in it so it's not like you know it's it's like such a the sooner you understand it, and you could still say, I understand it, but it's just not for me. And that's totally fine. But just hating it for the sake of hating it because you've heard people say that it's overpowering and this and that. Make up your own mind. Smell it first. And give it time. Because this one, first of all, the original formulation harpoons itself onto you. And it takes hours for it to peel off those, you know, apricot, peachy... Um, tuberose gardenia notes and then get into the warmer hues and it and, and it seems quite linear at first just because it lasts forever so with time the more you wear it and you realize oh wait a minute there's more to it than just that bombastic opening huh it's showing hints of what's underneath and it's just majestic now the made in france formulation hits into the floral aspect much quicker you know there's no oak moss there's nothing to really the fixative is not really there, so the, all of the ingredients are lighter, more bubbly. The musk is probably missing there as well, so everything is more light. The Giorgio made in France is even more sun, sunny and carefree, uh, without that depth, which is also very beautiful, actually, because it's much more friendly for the users. It's much more user-friendly. It doesn't require you to really learn and get to know it and understand it. It, it from the get-go it sure even the made in france version has that one hour where it's quite flat and then you start getting into the flowers and the gardenia starts popping and uh the ylang ylang appears and it just becomes such a beautiful warm sunny perfume uh white floral but also warm sunny perfume the original From the fluffy, fuzzy peach and apricot, it's just going to jump straight through the ylang ylang and the butter of the ylang ylang and the gardenia and the, and the tuberose. It's just going to and the jasmine. It's going to jump into the musks, into the sandalwoods, into the oak moss. So, at the opening, it has these cloying, sugary fruits, and at, at, at the base, it has these heavy ingredients. So it's kind of, it's, it's heavy. It bring you know, it is, it is a uh, you know. I'm ready for my close-up Mr. DeMille moment. This is Sunset Boulevard in a, in a bottle. Divine. Divine. If you want to kind of relive, even though this was released in the 80s, you know, especially the early 80s, have been referencing the 40s and 30s a lot. There's a lot of 40s and, and 30s and also 50s influences in the 80s style and fashion, particular in the first part of the 80s, where, um, and you can notice this in Georgia. Georgia smells of 30s uh, glamour, the the golden age of, of Hollywood cinema. So if you want to wear something, you, you could, of course, wear perfumes that are still in production today, that were in production in the 30s in Hollywood, and you could like feel that glamour. But if you want to dress up and feel as glamorous today as they did back then, you know, there's this kind of whole mental play of envisioning how something smelled back then. So in the 80s, this is how they envisioned Hollywood to have smelled in the 30s, in a way. And um, that glamour, you want to dress up and feel fabulous, bleach your hair platinum blonde, feel like Marilyn Monroe, feel your oats, put on Giorgio Beverly Hills, and you're going to have lit and lit vintage formulation if you want that heft of the 30s, of kind of a 30s memory, a memory of the 30s, an interpretation of the 30s, an homage to the 30s cinema. That's Giorgio in a nutshell original formulation, and it's just that fabulous. It's complex. It's complicated. Almost goes into that direction of Fracas by Robert Piguet. You can check out that review on my channel as well. I've reviewed that one too. That one also delivers, but more the femme fatale or the Black Dahlia uh, type of uh, thriller, black and white thriller type of Hollywood movie. I would almost say that Fracas, with its darker tuberose, is the dark counterpart, is like the night counterpart to Giorgio. Giorgio is almost like the day Fracas, the Fracas for the day. The, the daytime Fracas is Giorgio, and the nighttime Fracas is Fracas. And uh, they are quite different, but they have that similar 
vibe and allure about them. They are Hollywood creations. So, of course there's going to be artificiality there. Of course there's going to be spotlights there. Of course there's going to be dressing up involved and makeup involved and over-the-top acting sometimes, cringy moments as well. But you know, this is part of our pop culture. Whether you like it or not, we were raised in this pop culture and you kind of got to love it in a way because it had its moments. It had its cringe moments. It had its beautiful moments. But it's just so beautiful. It brings about wonderful, wonderful memories. And let me tell you one more thing. I am a bit biased too because it's my mom's favorite perfume. Hi, mom, by the way. My mom adores Giorgio, Beverly Hills. So she loves the Made in France version. She also loves the 80s version. She did not like the Made in Spain version either. So whenever I smell Giorgio, of course, I also think of my mom always. And uh, she gets a lot of compliments when she wears it. On her skin, when Giorgio works well on your skin, it's heaven. On her skin, it works like heaven. She, this is a compliment magnet for her. When she wears the Made in France version, people keep telling her at work, in the office, wherever she goes, oh, wow, what is, she smells like a ray of sunshine. Literally, like a floral, fresh, clean, zesty ray of sunshine. It's just elevating, mood elevating, wonderful, positive, positive scent. It's just so sweet and cute and bubbly on the right person. On her skin, it, it glows. It's a golden glow. On my skin, it's a little bit more bitter. Not so much the golden glow, but I get more of that kind of, of the poisonous hues of the gardenia. <laughs> I get that green out on my skin. And, uh, well, I mean, in the 80s version, I get the musk, like overdose of musk and, and oak moss. So it's, you know, I don't g gender eyes perfumes. Perfumes don't know gender for me. But uh, if, if <laughs> on me, Giorgio is very masculine. It, it smells almost musty masculine, like... Uh, Hormonal masculine, very, very intense. Uh, the newer version stays more calm, more floral, but uh, nevertheless uh, goes into that slight bitter direction. Green note of the gardenia, which I adore, but it's complicated. But it's just beautiful. And then the more it dries down and the more beachy and sandy it gets and, and, and calm, you know, that storm, the whirlwind, and the spotlights from the opening, they calm down, you know, and, and the movie has to come to an end at a certain point. Every Hollywood movie has a Hollywood ending, too. And the Hollywood ending is, is a happy ending, but, it, it, you know, there's a little tear falling down, you know, you're kind of nice, you, you feel all kind of fluffy inside when a Hollywood movie with a Hollywood ending finishes, and it's, it's a happy ending, and, you know, very cliche, very um, consumer-oriented, very mass, you know, for the masses, but happiness. You just go home feeling fluffy and you go to sleep and you, you know, you've been to the movies, had some popcorn and that movie has that happy ending. And I know a lot of people want these complex psychological movies like, uh, you know, in the, in, from Europe and Lars von Trier has, you know, some crazy shit like that. No, Giorgio is just class in a bottle. Hollywood movies. I mean, you think about the 80s movies. This one could be... Also, really, even though it does smell a bit more mature in its uh, 80s formulation, it could still be in 16 Candles, you know, I, it, it could still be in um, um, The Breakfast Club. I could, I smell this in The Breakfast Club. When I, was, I, I don't know, I envision it smelling um, in, in The Breakfast Club, uh, in, in the John Hughes movies in general, all of them, really. Um, I I envision it... Also worn in strange horror movies like the 80s uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, you know, <laughs> Nancy, who is uh, the survivor, she's the last, uh, the final girl in uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, you know, Nancy could wear Georgia Beverly Hills because she's a survivor. And even though all of her friends basically die in the movie because it's a horror movie, she survives. And it is a happy ending for her. So even though we go through all this drama, the main heroine survives. And that's Giorgio, and Giorgio is still a survivor, still to this day, 40th birthday this year. Congratulations, Giorgio. May you live to be another 150,000, because you are an incredible perfume, and you deserve way more appreciation. And I know a lot of people nowadays, well, they just kind of bash this one, and they don't give it a minute of the day. It's a pity, because if it wasn't for Giorgio, 
a lot of the perfumes today that you love so much would not have been possible because this paved the way to so many fragrances. What else did I write here? Oh yeah, the stripped package. <laughs> this is so cute. I was thinking about it. it doesn't this remind us of um, old glorious times? Um, it looks like an old-fashioned beach bathing suit changing area, you know, where you would kind of like change your bathing suit in at the beach. That's how beautiful it is. You know, and also, what is very fascinating, this used to be worn by everyone in the 80s. Nowadays, rarely anybody wears it, so you don't smell it everywhere. And for the quality it has today, and for the fact that it is a cheapie, you can get it for a relatively low price these days, this is niche. This is literally as niche as niche gets. <laughs> and it's so funny how niche is becoming, like we're returning to the 80s to get niche, you know, and the niche of today is becoming mass released. So everything is inverted, everything is turning, everything is upside down in the world we live in today. I love Giorgio so much. Let me, let me smell the one that I didn't spray. Oh my God, this is the Made in USA version, which is actually... Anyway, I'm going to spray it here on this side. Oh, my favorite one. <laughs> oh, that's why I don't want to spray too much because this one, made in USA, somewhere in between Elizabeth Arden, nailed it with this formulation. They cut down a little bit of the oak moss here and less musk. So delivered more flowers, but overdosed ylang ylang. So these are flowers swimming in butter. It is majestic. If you can, hunt down a made in USA. It is an American perfume after all. And the best formulation of this one. The Americans know how to do their Hollywood movie. Nobody does a Hollywood movie like America. And if you want that George, your experience, after all, it is an American fragrance, so you, you best buy it made in USA. The made in USA, <laughs> it's incredible. It just makes you smile. It just makes you smile like an idiot. I could just smile the whole day when I smell this. <sighs> Bury me with it. <laughs> this one is going to be, you know, this and Chanel, of course. Um, and Au Noir. And Calvin Klein, a couple of Obsession and some more. But yeah, <laughs> so anyway, but this one, Made in USA. The love of my life. One of the big love, loves of my life. And yes, in one of those one of those 10 perfumes to take on a deserted island where you're never going to see humanity again, you're never going to have another perfume again. This is one of those 10 I would take with me on that island. That's how much I love Georgia Beverly Hills. So let me read your comments, guys. Uh, let's get to some chat comments. Cha, I have the Giorgio Beverly Hilf. Oh, you yeah, have the one made in Spain, Emilio. Oh, sorry. MK says, Giorgio is Jacob's mama perfume. Yes, it is. Pedro says, I love Giorgio Beverly Hills. I love it too. I love it to bits. Uh, Candy says, um, I don't have the bottle, but can still smell it all the way from the 80s. It was a beast. <laughs> Just another Raj says, oh my God, the frickin' Giorgio. I was in rant with that recently. Seller told me it's from France, then sent me from Spain. Oh no, you got it made in Spain. And they they lied to you that it was made in France? Cha, the shade of it all. Aisha says, Audrey, I love those saddle... Oh, we were talking about something. Um, Robert says, saw the perfume for $14 for 90 mil, a tester bottle. It was sold uh, in a day. Did not have the chance to buy it. Oh no, sorry. Oh, God, not Giorgio, says Aisha. Oh, you don't like it? I love Giorgio. Pedro says, I love Giorgio. It is so loud, scandalous, orange blossom with many tuberose and animalic notes, dirty and wild. <laughs> Melly says, I have a tiny splash bottle. Pedro says, it is so big, I cannot handle it. Pedro, no pun intended. <laughs> uh... Melly says, it is a beast. <laughs> Just another Roger says, by the way, I tested the Giorgio made in Spain. It is still as powerful as heck. It, it, mm, it's not it, though. It ain't it, though. It, it not that, that butter gone, girl. The butter. The ilang ilang butter gone. 
Paul Parker says, I'm subbed, baby. <laughs> Aisha says, my sister used to wear it and the smell would torment me. Oh boy, some, sis some sisterhood rivalry I sense there, young Padawan. My mom loves this too, says Melly. Oh, cute. Aisha says, it reminds me of something a cat would make. Child, no, Bel Respiro smells like pee a cat would make. Um... MK says, the modern packaging took out all the original appeal. Looks very blah in comparison. Ah, welcome to the 20s. Um, just another Roger. I ended up washing my arm sprayed with Giorgio last night before going to bed, for it may torture me like Freddy Krueger would. I'm not ready for it. It's not bad at all. It was just too clingy. <laughs> oh, it clings, says Melly. Um... Oh, Vanny. Hi, Vanny. Welcome to the chat. Vanny says, hi, everyone. Joining from the train en route back home. Haha, <laughs> we discuss in Giorgio. Delicious. Yes, we're discussing Giorgio Beverly Hills. Made in Spain formulation is a joke. Weak AF, says Emilio. Vanny says, I'd always wear Giorgio Beverly Hills to the gym because there's nothing it can't mask. Oh, my God. Um... Aisha says, oh my god, the shade. Aisha says, I guess you could say that the bottle looks nice to hold. Melly says, it's more potent than poison, lol. I mean, it says, no, it's not. Um, it's not as, it's not dark. The, the, the poison has the depth, the darkness. And um, you could say it's, it's diametrically opposite to poison because Giorgio has the depth in the height, in the sun, in the air. So it, it is it is potent. In many ways, you could say it's 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 stronger than poison, in, in because it's it's it has light in its heft, and poison is stronger than Giorgio because it has darkness in its heft. Um, Roger says uh, the the box reminds me of pick and mix paper bags for sweets. It does a little bit. Yes, it's very dynasty aspirational, says Aisha. Um, Paul Parker, uh, oh, yeah, Robert says, Lo, what are you going to do with your Made in Spain bottle? Oh, yeah, asking Emilio, I'm going to use it as a toilet spray to mask up the indoors. Cha. Um, Melly says, the peach and tuberose does it for me. In a bad way, lol. Yeah, Melly, you're not a fan of tuberose, huh? Uh, Emilia says, jokes aside, made in Spain version is beautiful, but really stale. Audrey says, on paper, it sounds marvelous. Vanny says, ingredients? Perfume. <laughs> Just another Rogers. I think uh, my Giorgio Spain will be kept inside my empty selfridges with the striped yellow tissue. At least they can get along together. Child. Oh my God, the 80s version, you guys. Ah, oh, it's made in UK. But the made in US version, made in France. Oh, they're all so beautiful. But made in made in made in US version with, with, with that oak moss. It's just delicious. Delicious. Stupid Lover says it's something off with the Spain reformulation. Yeah, it's watered down. Substantially watered down. <laughs> Melly says, Oh, I need a dirty martini right now. Vanny says, something about Georgia Beverly Hills always reminded me of 19. Is it just me? The Oak Moss. No, you're totally right. It's the Oak Moss. Uh, in the original formulation of Giorgio. It, it has... A it, but it, it reminds me of the pure perfume of number 19. It has that bitter aspect to it, that green touch to it, definitely. Definitely. Definitely it's the Oak Moss. Yeah, Emilia says, it's the Oak Moss child. She has a Sheepra character. Oh, she totally, totally has a Sheepra character. Totally. Vanny says only vaguely. Not even that vaguely, Vanny. If you sniff out, like, um, again, here's the original formulation of it, you know, where we literally distributed directly by Georgia Beverly Hills with, like, no ingredients listed. This little baby here, this smells like the pure perfume of Chanel Number no. 19 within that green Sheepra bitter tone. Like old school Chanel Number no. 19 pure perfume. 
not the modern day stuff. Uh, Pedro says, people should also pay attention to Carolina Herrera's signature, another 80s beautiful white floral. Melly says, well, I suppose I do not understand it, lol. No, you, you just, you don't like it. It's fine. <laughs> and Melly says, Melly, you're a Chanel Otendre type of gal. Aisha says, it harpoons itself to you. Great way to describe this perfume, right? You know, I got my voc vocabulary. Hey, Debbie, how's it doing? Welcome to the chat, Debbie. I like it, but I prefer Giorgio Red. I love Red. Oh my God, I love Red to bits. Going to review that one also soon. Donism says, um, did we just start? <laughs> no, we started a while ago. Um, Melly says, I know, we talked about that. I am a sweet, floral, fruity citrus girl, but I love my poison. Yeah, that's a little bit of a tuberose going on there, too. Pedro says, Elizabeth Arden also makes a body spray version nowadays. Saw it around, maybe only a diluted version, which is not a problem. If you like overspraying, I don't know. Uh, I don't know it, though. Um, I gave my bottle of Georgia Red to my dad, and he demolished it. <laughs> says Emilio. Melly, <laughs> Melly says, but I love Giorgio Red. Oh, I love it too so much. Hello, Gurcharan. Welcome back. There's a Giorgio Beverly Hills for men, says I'm Louis. Yes, there is. I have that one as well. Very different. Smells very different from the classic Giorgio Beverly Hills. Just another Roger Dang, that seller who deceived me, sending the maid in Spain. I wanted to know exactly how the story about Giorgio being banned in restaurants, if that was even true, which is probably the maid in USA. Pedro says, yes, uh, I'm a big fan of white flowers. The thing I do not like are fruits and scents, except for allure. Aisha says, oh no, not Fraca. <laughs> Pedro says, I lo uh, uh, love Fraca. Also Blonde by Versace. Oh, another two burrows bomb. I actually smelled Fraca. I love it. Pedro, do you like Pleasures by Estée Lauder? Sorry, Roger says. <laughs> Talking about American fragrances from that era, says MK. Anyone remember Adam's skin scent for her? I know Adam is for men. There used to be a sort of nectar con um, concentration, which was n so delicious. Has it been discontinued? Not sure. Um... Uh, Aisha says, what is the same note in Georgia Beverly Hills that Fraca and Versace Blonde? Because that is the note I dislike. You don't like tuberose, my dear. Then it's the tuberose that you don't like. Um, what is GBH, Pedro asks. GBH is Georgia, stands for Georgia Beverly Hills. It's just an abbreviation. Uh, yeah, Aisha says, yeah, I thought it might be tuberose. <laughs> so... Right? Melly says, it is totally The Breakfast Club, the movie. Oh, I love that movie so much, you guys. All right. Well, thank you so much for all the chats. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Rich Mitch loves Oak Moss. The Oak Moss uh, makes him very happy. <laughs> Daniel says, does the package specify the country of manufacture so I can be certain that I don't get the Spanish one? Yes, it does, Daniel, but be careful. Can we... Um, try to zoom in here because you see they don't always print it they dent it in they dent it in so you see here you see France it says made in France but it's not printed it's pressed in they also press in the made in Spain so you don't see it if the photo isn't done properly if it's not photographed well it's really hard to see if somebody's selling you an open package Every bottle at the bottom has to state where it's made. So this one, for example, it's going to be hard to see because it's very tiny. Yeah, it's, it's too small for us to see now, but it does say down there made in France. Child, it's too small, but you know what I mean. So, yeah, in the past, um, it was printed. Here it would state made in UK. This is an old uh, package. There you have it made in the made in UK. All right, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you like this review. Georgia Beverly Hills, one of the loves of my life. I love this perfume so much. Ugh. In all three formulations that we have here, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please consider subscribing to my channel. Also, push the notifications button so you get notified every time I upload a new video. And why not consider becoming a member? Join today, become a member of the Fashion Bunker, get extra perks, special emojis, uh, badges of honor, uh, access to videos before they hit YouTube, some exclusive only to members, and also um, um, the entire reruns of the live streams that are only available to the members. And also, same applies, all the perks apply, 
minus the emojis, because Patreon doesn't deliver those, um, apply to my patrons. Become a patron today. Join me on Patreon. Super Deco Vault spell together and help the fashion bunker grow. Other places you can join me, I was just thinking, yeah, Instagram, Super Deco Vault spelled together where you get to see all my crazy thoughts about perfumes and fashion and you get all these comments, quotes and everything that I do, my research is over there. So it's very analytical, if you may. And you can also follow me on my two Chanel uh, dedicated profiles. One is called Coco Chanel Privé, all spelled together, dedicated to Chanel's life. And the other one is called uh, Coco Chanel is in my house, dedicated to the Chanel collection and also whatever's going on with the Chanel brand these days. So you guys, these uh, are my three Giorgio Concentration, no, not concentration, formulations, original, and then made in UK version, by the way, original, but made in the UK. They also had a made in US. This is the made in US, uh, first Elizabeth Arden version, and then made in France, Elizabeth Arden version. As I said, there was a rare made in the Netherlands version too. I haven't smelled that one yet. And then now we got our made in Spain. Oh, well, Revlon, because Revlon bought Elizabeth Arden. What can I say? You guys, this one is complicated, but that's why I love it so much. It's It has that character. It's a bit loud. It's a little bit obnoxious. It, it kind of, you know, it's like one of those friends you have that you sometimes go like, oh, okay, we're going to meet up again with them. But you love them because they, they have a good heart. They have a good heart and they mean well. They mean well. They just sometimes can't control their enthusiasm. And I love people who are over enthusiastic sometimes because they're just sunshines. Sunshine's in a bottle. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, never forget to never give up on love. See you soon. Take care. Bye.